Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm rejoicing. I'm glad in it. And even though here in the Washington, D.C. area it's raining today, we still have sunshine in our souls because God has been so good to us. And I pray that the goodness of God is shining in your life as well. So thank you for joining us today. I'm going to be ministering from the book of James today about getting closer to Christ. How do I get closer to God? How do I walk with God and hear from God and see the supernatural miracles of God flowing in my life? And the scriptures are so clear about what God wants us to do and the steps are that are incumbent upon us to draw closer to God. We're going to be in James 4, and I believe it will be a powerful word to encourage you. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father, you're worthy to be praised, worthy to be glorified, worthy to be honored. We bless your name. We give you thanks for your loving kindness and the multitude of your mercies. For every door you've already opened and every door you're yet to open. We pray for one another. We pray for our brother, our sister. We pray for our internet family around the world. We pray, Father, that you would touch them. Grant them what they stand in the need of. Work a miracle in their life. In the name of Jesus. Well, Father, I pray today in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would anoint this word in this time of worship. Let it be a sweet aroma in your nostrils. Accept it in your sight, almighty God. And let your name get the praise. Save somebody that needs to be saved. Reclaim a backslider today. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Father, and we thank you. Rebuke the hand of the enemy. Build a hedge around this place. Let the power of your anointing be released in here today. That hearts are changed and lives are transformed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, open your Bibles to James 4 very quickly. I know it's the time is late. I'm way past what I'm normally preaching. <laughs> Turn to James 4. Say amen when you get there. I want to read verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. Here's what it says. Verse 7, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. I want to talk about the keys to draw closer to God. Somebody say, the keys to draw closer to God. Tell your neighbor the keys to draw closer to God. You can be seated. I don't know where you are in your journey. Don't know where you are in your walk. But I suspect that because you come to church, there's some people here today who desire to be closer to God tomorrow than they were yesterday. Yeah, I want to get closer to God. I'm, I'm, I never want to get to a place of contentment, but I want to get closer to God. And here's what the scripture says. Here's what verse 8 says. If you draw closer to God, he will draw closer to you. You make a step toward God, he makes a step toward you. You reach out to God, he reaches out to you. You approach God, he will approach you. If you seek God's face, he'll seek you, he'll seek you out. If you're not as close to God as you used to be, make no mistake about which one of you has gone astray. It is not God who has strayed. It is not God who's gone by the wayside. It is in fact you. And I wanted to take just a few moments today that I had and talk to you about something that I think is very important to God and it should be important to you. How do I get closer to God? How do I draw closer to God? How do I, how do I get God flowing in my life? And, and the thing I've been saying all day today, and I want to say it right now again to y'all, is that I like living my life. I like living a life where I see God open up doors that I know only God could have opened. Anybody here ever had a door open and you know that only God could have opened that door? Only God could have orchestrated certain events and certain things to happen. Only God could have made this happen. And I like living my kind of life where I see God doing just that. 
working miracles on my behalf and giving me the desires of your heart. The scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart, Psalm 37. You delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. He'll make those doors open and it begins with being in the posture of drawing close to God. Your problem is you are a miles away from God and you think that just because you show up on Sunday, he ought to be happy and do stuff for you. And my challenge here today is to tell you what it is you need to do to get in the, right, in the right place so that you see God open up doors for you. And that's why I want to hit you with today, the keys, the principles of what needs to be in place in your life so you can get closer to God. Now, they're all, the three points I want to make are right here in uh, this section of scripture that I read. There's a bunch of other things that I'm not going to talk about but I'm going, to, I'm, just, I'm going to pick three things today out of this passage. But I do want to just highlight again verse 8. This says, if you draw, draw near to God and he might draw near to you. Is that what it says? No. Draw near to God and he what? Will. It's a promise from God. You draw close to him, he'll draw close to you. you. You make an effort toward him, he'll make an effort toward you. And here's what it tells us to do. Here's number one. There it is right here. It boils down to these three points. Here's number one. It says right here in verse number seven, therefore submit to God. Somebody say submission. submission. You got to submit to God. Now in, in, in America, submission is a cuss word. Because nobody wants to submit to nobody. Nobody wants to be responsible for answering to or submitting to somebody else. And that's the downfall of you being able to get to where God wants you to be. You're unwilling to submit. You don't, you don't want anybody to tell you what to do. You don't, you don't want to be under the authority of anybody. And that's what the word submit means. It means to arrange under. It means to subject yourself under somebody, to yield to another's direction or advice. The word submit is a Greek military term, which means you arrange yourself in the troop and get under the command of a leader. Ooh, that's profound right there. It means you're lining up every area of your life. You, you are allowing God to be in charge of every arena of your life. Some of you will never get to where God wants you to be and never have the favor of God in your life because you're unwilling to submit. This is what my challenge is as a pastor of a church and a pastor of Negro people. Everybody wants to do what it is they want to do. See, y'all think submission is, let me back up. Submission, you have not submitted if, if somebody asks you to do something or if God asks you to do something that you agree with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kind of quiet back here with these young adults. I ain't heard a single amen from these young adults after y'all sang that wonderful reckless love of God song. Yeah. Submission occurs when you're directed to do something by somebody in a position of authority and you don't want to do it. And yet you line up yourself to get in line and march to the tune of what somebody else tells you to do. That's when you know you're in a place of submission. My big challenge in talking to people day after day and week after week and what I do every day is I butt heads with people who when I try to tell them what God wants for their life and I give them scripture. This ain't my opinion. It's not my uh, assumption of what I want you to do. I'm giving you scripture to do and they say I don't want to do it. I don't want that. That's what I hear very frequently. I don't want that. That's not what I want. I don't like that. Well, when you're under the authority of Jesus, it's not about what you want. And that's why some of you cannot get what God wants to do. God wants to be close to you. He wants to open up miracles and doors and bless you and take you beyond your dream and, 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 and do things for you that's unimaginable, that'll blow people's minds. But if you keep kicking against the pricks, if you keep fighting against God, it's impossible for him to do it. But it's, if you want him to do it, because see, when God knows you're his child and you're under his care and you're marching to his beat and you're in love with him and you're obedient to him and you're submitted to him, he will open up doors for you that you could have never opened on your own. 
Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all not saying nothing to me. I'm trying to get you to understand that that's what God wants all of us to learn to do. Submit, submission. Say, submit. Say it. Holler at me. Talk back at a brother. Say, submit. submit. I know it's a cuss word in this culture. You want to do what you want to do. You in charge. Your life. That's why your life is so jacked up now, because you've been in charge. Somebody say submission, holiday. That's, that's clear, submit to God. They're, therefore, submit to God. Submit to his word. Submit to what he says, it's clear. Now let me challenge you. I bet you everybody in here, everybody, got something in your life that God has asked you to submit to that you haven't done. If y'all all say amen together, nobody know I'm talking about you. I bet you everybody here got something that God been challenging you on, talking to you about, speaking to you about, urging you to do, and you haven't done it. Y'all notice how the amens get lower and lower and lower every time I say it? I'm trying to drive this point on. You cannot get the favor of God in your life like you want it as long as you're in charge of your life. Now, submission... You know, the Bible, you know, this, this is our lifestyle. This is why I, come, this is why I gotta be in church every Sunday. I don't care where I am, what I'm doing. It doesn't matter what country I'm in. I'm going to church somewhere. I'm gonna find me a church. I wish I could say that's the truth for other members of my family. Get a camera right here real quick. Let, her, <laughs> let the people see her shaking her head. No. Um, because I, I know if I don't get under the word, this thing washes my life and washes my heart and washes my mind. I got to be in this word, both reading it and in terms of worship, in terms of hearing the word. This, this is my daily what I need every day. Because this is challenging me in so many areas. It's pushing me in so many areas. Just like I know God is challenging some of y'all in so many areas of what you need to do. My problem is that, I, uh, you know, church, church peoples. <laughs> hear the pastor teach. State's attorney. <laughs> leave out of here saying to themselves, I ain't doing that then go and do what they're going to do, make a havoc and wreck of their life, then come back here, come stand in line, Pastor, I need to meet with you. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I need a counseling session. I'm counseling right now. I'm doing a counseling session right now. Some of these people have been a member of this church for years. And yet walk out and do what they want to do and then come back and then want me to make the time. I am unavailable. <laughs> Here's what I feel. I say to people, how long have you been a member of the church? 10 years. If you haven't listened and done what I said in 10 years, why would I think that you would do what I say in 10 minutes in my office? It's tight, but it's right. It's thick up in here. The tension is up in here. It's tough. It's tough. Pastor, it's tough up in here. You notice they ain't saying amen. They ain't saying nothing, Pastor. They looking at me, and some of them looking straight ahead. They don't want me to come by them. They think I'm going to call them out or something like that. I'm just trying to tell you, submit in every area of your life. Submit when it comes to how you manage your money. Submit. I know I told y'all to cut up y'all credit cards, but what did y'all do? Held on to your credit card. I ain't cutting up my credit card. What did I tell you to do with finances? I told you to pay your tithes and offerings. 
its tithes and offerings. About 15 people clapped on that one. It's tithes and offerings. That's submission. The scripture says you rob God in tithes and offerings. Y'all so tight, y'all write y'all check for $13.17. I'm gonna give God my tithe and not a penny more. I tell y'all, don't date people who ain't saved. But no! You think you've been called to missionary evangelistic dating. Now you're all entangled up with somebody who don't go. And by the way, listen, God ain't never called nobody to be dating somebody who's not saved. He used to say, loving the Lord, supposed to be loving the Lord, on fire, in the word, with Jesus. And you feel the Lord leading you to be dating somebody who's not saved. Let me tell you something. I ask the people, when they come, they say, I think about getting married, Pastor. I say, is he saved? Problem number one, when they say, I don't know. If you don't know whether the person is saved, that's reason enough right there for you not to be involved with them. Y'all shouldn't have came to this service. Look at the choir up there, look at them. <laughs> they mad at me. I'm just trying to help y'all understand God didn't call you to do that. And you get it all entangled and all entwined. And by the way, just cause somebody go to church don't mean they saved. <laughs> I'm almost finished. It's about 45 more minutes, I'll be finished. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? What in your life has God called you to submit to? Because everybody in here got something that they kicking against the pricks. You want to draw close to God, submit. That's number one. Here's number two. It's in verse 7 too. It says, resist the devil. Y'all not resisting the devil, y'all welcoming the devil. Y'all friends with the devil. Y'all singing the devil's music. If I went out and got in most of y'all's cars right now, just took the key from you, went and got in your car and turned it on, BAM on the radios, (laughs) coming on, it ain't gonna be Jesus keep me near the cross. blurting out of the radio, in your ear, in your head, in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul, is music with words and messages that are the opposite of what God is all about. There's tension up in here, bro. Tension, they don't like this kind of preaching. They thought I was going to stay up there and just preach a nice little sermon. But I had to come down here and get in their grill. What's up? So the music part, he listens to bad music. You hope not. Maybe. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve. You had to go to the bathroom? Okay. I'm glad you came back. (laughs) Y'all got to learn to resist the devil. And y'all not resisting the devil. You're making rooms for him. You're watching stuff on TV. Perpetrate. Y'all ain't got, y'all don't have to say nothing. You know what I discovered about the 12 o'clock crowd? 
this is true of the 10 and the 12 o'clock crowd. If I say something and you know somebody guilty, y'all say, amen, pastor. <laughs> Preach. Yeah. But when I say something that's about y'all, y'all don't say nothing. Y'all keep quiet. <laughs> that's how I know when I'm, I'm at home and I'm right on it. When y'all get quiet like that, and y'all know y'all watching these programs and these shows and these movies and stuff that's not perpetrating anything that's edifying or is going to build you up or help you become a better Christian or help you make better choices. You're looking at stuff on TV that's the opposite. Y'all letting Ken, Con, what's his name, Kanye? What is his name, Kanye? Crazy West. What is his name? What's the man's name? Wait, name the one daughter north, one daughter south, another daughter east. And y'all trying to be like them, listening to his music, and trying to walk in the footsteps of him and his crazy wives and their family. Somebody tell me, please hurry up and finish, Pastor. Please hurry up. <laughs> resist the devil. When you resist, he will flee from you. But if you don't resist him, he'll move in, he'll pack up, move his stuff, come in your house, live in your house, live in your family, make hell in your family. He there because you ain't resisted him yet. Y'all better learn to kick that joker out of your house and tell him you don't want nothing he got. You don't want his music. You don't want his TV shows. You don't want his books, his magazines. You don't want none of his mess in your house because you want God's favor over your house. You want God's joy over your house. You want God's answers over your house. And you can't get it while you're entertaining and letting him come in your house. I'm finished. I'm coming to a close. Let me give you a third thing. What was the first thing I told y'all? Yeah, number two, resist the devil. And here's number three, humility. Walk in humility with God. If you've been around here any length of time, you can hear me talk about humility. Because humility is the order of the day. That's the thing that moves God. God loves humility. The problem with most people is you're too arrogant. You think you're all that. You think, and, and here's what puts you in the, in the role of thinking you're all that. You compare yourself with somebody. And I think I've been preaching and trying to tell y'all, stop comparing yourself to somebody else. To make yourself feel good about yourself. The scripture says humility, uh, humble yourself. And I love this verse right here because if you humble yourself under God, this is verse 10, by the way. Uh, it says, um, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. You humble yourself under God, he'll elevate you. Some of you look to be elevated, it requires humility. Now, I, look, I try to live a life of humility. I try to walk in a way and make choices that are reflections of humility. What does that mean, Pastor? It means I look for times to serve. I look for opportunities to admit wrong, ask for forgiveness, even when I'm not wrong. When I go to a meeting, in most of the meetings, that I go to, I'm pastoring the largest church in the room, if the other pastors in there, but I don't walk in there like I'm a big dog. Some of y'all, God can't give you a big business because your head's already big and you ain't got no business. Oh God, 
mind. I better sit down because I feel something coming on me right now. <laughs> Humility is the order of the day. Look for ways to serve. Look for ways to be humility. Anybody who's been around me any length of time, they'll see me picking up trash, folding up, putting chairs away. Because I don't, I don't think I'm so big that I can't do that. I don't think I'm that big. I look for opportunities. And I believe because I live like that, God's elevating me. Ooh. So I want to press you, challenge you, push you on these three things right here. You want to get close to God? Look for being submitted to his word and his ways. Submission. Resist the devil, because the devil going to come in your life. He's going to make suggestions. Oh, by the way, did I tell you what the devil looks like? Do you know, how, you know what the devil looks like? Did I talk to you all about that yet? You know, I, the problem I have is I, I preach all these sermons, and if I, get, I forget what I told who. So most people, especially the 12 o'clock crowd, they think the devil, uh, Pastor Queen, has a red suit, a tail, <laughs> horns, and a pitchfork. Y'all want to know what the devil looks like? I'm going to tell you how to recognize him. Look at the person next to you. <laughs> When the devil talks, he uses the people that are the closest to you. Some of y'all have been instruments of God, and some of y'all have been instruments of the devil. When Job lost his, lost his 10 kids and got stricken with a case of boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, the devil talked to his wife, and she spoke. The devil spoke what the devil said to her. His wife spoke what the devil said to her. She said, you ought to go ahead and curse God and die. That was the devil talking through her. I'm feeling something over in this section right here. I don't know why I keep coming over here. He makes a suggestion and you say it. That's how the devil works. He, he makes a thought. He can use you. How many of y'all, all of y'all know the devil can use you? Jesus told the disciples he was going to die on the cross. Peter jumped up and said, that'll never happen to you. We'll fight for you. We'll, we won't let that happen. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. To Peter, the one who preached on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Peter allowed the devil to use him momentarily. And I'm trying to tell y'all, resist that. Amen. Amen. I'm done. Father, thank you for this opportunity to share with the people of God. I pray today that we would draw closer to you, Father, closer to you. Help us, Lord. Submit to you, resist the enemy, and walk in humility, just as Jesus walked in humility, just as Jesus submitted to you, just as see Jesus resisted the devil. Let us do that, too every day in Jesus name amen all right do me a favor look at your neighbor and say are you saved are you backslidden are you sure of your salvation do you have a church home say if you ain't right come on I'll walk down there with you just bring him on down here real quick bring him on down here Say, let's get right with the Lord. Let's submit to God. Let's draw closer to God. Let's get in the center of God's will. Let's let God speak to us. Come right now, quickly. Come, come on. Blood is running warm in your veins. You got the activities of your limbs. Come right now, quick.
it off. Don't debate it. Come right now. Come. behind you is a counselor and they're going to take you in the back come on amen I'll wait for you son because he said he wanted to come and what we try to do is when children come we ask them why they come a parent cannot make a decision for a child let me say that at the outset but what you want a child to say is I, I know I'm a sinner and I need Jesus in my life that's when you know they're ready all right and that's what we he's not quite ready to articulate that all right father I thank you for these who've come I pray today that their faith would be extended toward you and they would walk in repentance I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would reveal and manifest yourself, forgive them, cleanse them, and fill them with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Praise him. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. All right. Okay, thank you all for coming. I love you. The Lord bless and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen.